what you guys got another product review here for you this one is the dollar me d6 media player this is the new tv box uh, pre-released here as you can see it's got a quad core and also hd graphics 4k ultra hd uh, hdmi tv box it does have bluetooth as well as i said the model is d6 uh, quad core a53 2 gigahertz processor pentacore Mali 450 uh, GPU, one gigabyte of RAM in this one, and eight gig ROM. Also, Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz. This version costs 32 pound. The two gigabyte version costs 40 pounds. Inside the box, you're going to get your remote control, as you can see here. Pretty basic remote control, pretty lightweight, but it does do the job, as you'll see a little bit later on. Um, if you are going to use this device, I would advise you to get yourself a, a Logitech uh, keypad with a keyboard or something like that much easier to use which is Bluetooth also you've got your HDMI cable here as you can see pretty short cable but it does the job uh, also you've got your power adapter which is for the UK this one but it will also do a US and other versions here but this is the free pin UK model and also we have your uh, user manual which is pretty sparse really as you can see here uh, not a lot in it, but it uh, just gives you the information in English and some pictures here. But it's pretty easy to set up. This is the actual uh, device itself. Checkerboard effect, piano black and also matte black uh, squares as you can see here. On the front we have a piano black finish with a, p a power button on the front as well. And on the back end as you can see here we have the SPDIF uh, port for your audio. Also we have a LAN port right there next to it. And also we have an AV port and a HDMI port and also the DC 5 volt uh, port for your power. On the side of the actual unit you've got two USB ports and also uh, the TF port which is for your memory card in case you want to put in some uh, memory space in there. Also on the bottom you've got a pretty much a rubberized black finish here with some ventilation and some information about uh, the unit itself. And you can see this is the one gig version. I would advise you to uh, go up to the two gig version. This version is pretty entry level and uh, it did struggle with some features, but you'll see that a little bit later on in the video. And I'll quickly just show you the LCD display on the front of the device. Quite a nice little touch. So let's uh, have a look at the boot up process. So let's boot up our Dolomy TV box here. Now this is the one gigabyte and eight gigabyte storage version here, but they do do a two gigabyte version, which I would advise you to get if you are going to buy this one. Uh, but the GUI interface is very nice. Uh, as you can see, network, uh, you can go into here, display. This would let you change your display resolutions. Now this is a 4K TV that I'm on, but because I'm recording through a 1080p uh, box it will only allow me to uh, record up to 1080p so it won't display the 4k but it will let you choose 4k if you're on a 4k TV with a 4k cable HDR uh, you can come in here and have a look and uh, change those if you want to it's on auto uh, by default false RGB output this is for older TVs like Sony's and Philips TVs uh, the old compatibility mode it allows you to uh, enable that and I've not seen it on other TV boxes um, but that feature is in there as well. Sounds, this will allow you to change all your sounds depending on what sound setup you want to use. Um, you will be using SPDIF or any of that type of stuff. You can use that here, um, Dolby Sounds and stuff like that. You can use that on this box and it works perfectly fine. As you can see here, uh, there are all your settings that you can change for that. All the apps uh, will be in the apps part here and this will tell you all the apps that you have on the system also the downloaded apps that you've done and also the running apps that you have on this system so uh, these are all the apps here and these can all be uninstalled uh, as well if you wish to uninstall some of these um, some of these are a bit uh, unfamiliar to me I'm not sure why some of these are on there but uh, they are like black hole and camera not sure what they're doing on there um, but they are on there and I'm not sure what they do but you can check those out and again, it's your TV box, so you can uninstall whatever you like. So let's take a look at the uh, device about, and this gives you the Android 6.01, and also when the last security patch was done, which was in August. Again, the language, it suits a lot of different languages. You can always go over to Android to check out what languages they do support. Let's go into more settings here. Inside here, you can take a look at your data usage, which is for Wi-Fi and Ethernet to keep an eye on what data usage you're using. Uh, whether it be on Wi-Fi or net, uh, Ethernet. 
Again, you can go into more settings here and uh, on the wireless and networks, and it allows you to set up your VPN or portable hotspot. And there's some other bits here like memory in the device area. So if you click on this, it will give you the memory, uh, which is uh, in, in use on, or an average use and free on here. Now I'll give you a full blown uh, benchmark for this. So you'll be able to see all that information a little bit later on in the video. And these are just some of the other settings here. And I'll just show you quickly about the media box itself. And there you go. There's all the information there for the actual media box. So let's move on and we're going to go on back to the uh, GUI interface here and go up to the t-shirt uh, icon here and these are the only uh, menu buttons you've got on this uh, TV box but this allows you to change the actual background uh, wallpaper background here on the actual TV box as you can see here by just switching those over and again if you're using the remote control you may find this a little bit difficult uh, to navigate uh, if you've got a keyboard and touchpad, uh, that works just fine on it, I found. Now, they have got their own version of Kodi here, and you will need to uh, go to the uh, auto update to put all the plugins in. When I opened this up, there was no plugins inside here, and that's because I never clicked probably on the auto update part, which I'll show you a little bit later on. But you can see here, this is their actually own built uh, Kodi section. And we'll take a look at the system info for Kodi a little bit later on. So we're just going to move along as you can see the menu here you can hold the button down on the uh, actual um, remote control here to slide that along if you wish but it's very hard to control now this is the k add-ons which allows you to put all your plugins and all your add-ons into kodi you will have to enable this um, feature but once you get in here you click all and it will put all your plugins into Kodi as you see there was none in there but if you click on that all button it will put all your plugins and all your repositories in there so it all works just fine and uh, we're going to scroll across here and take a look at another feature which is already installed on this uh, actual TV box and uh, this is their own YouTube app which they've got on here and uh, once you open up YouTube, I'll just show you what you can uh, search for. We'll just search for some 4K content here. And I'll just quickly show you this. And this box was only uh, playing at 1080p. It wouldn't play any 4K content at 4K. So when I click on this, which is a 4K video, we'll check out the actual quality. There was no shuttering or stuttering or nothing like that when I was uh, streaming it down. That was fine. Uh, but when you go to HD settings to check out what, you, what the actual settings are on the quality, you can see it's only 1080p. And I did that with a number of other videos and they're all only 1080p. So that seems to be the limit for YouTube. So as you can see, the Google Play Store works just fine. You can download all your apps and install those. Games, it's a little bit limited, as you'll see a little bit later on. But the Geekbench score is uh, what you see on the screen right now. We'll scroll through here so you can see more of the results of Geekbench. Uh, it is a pretty in-depth uh, program, and it will tell you everything you need to know about your box and the actual power of your box. Now, remember, this is only the one gig uh, memory box uh, they do the two gig version I did find the one gig a little bit limited on memory uh, so if you are thinking about getting a box then you maybe look want to be looking for the two gig or uh, three gig ones which are coming out now uh, but here are the results uh, for this TV box and I'll show you a little bit later on you'll see what the one gig memory is like when you try to do other, other uh, things on this actual TV box so you can see there's your single and multi-core there. Now on the CPU Z uh, results you'll see here, this is all your uh, results for your CPU Z. And your CP load, you can see what it's uh, running at here. It keeps fluctuating, it will do that. And also you can see the clock speed and the four cores and also the architecture. And you can go through here and you can see total RAM 810 and uh, Intel in, internal storage is 4.76 gigabytes left and you can see the root access is available on this box as well by here you can see all the information there you can pause the screen and read this at your own leisure if you wish it tells you the security patch level on this box and also this was another concern of mine which was the actual thermal uh, the heat the box was really hot and you can see here by the actual results 
on the thermal uh, results here. Now I haven't run, uh, this wasn't after I run uh, Geekbench, uh, this was before I run Geek Geekbench and it was that hot and it never seemed to go down. Now again, we can uh, go through the menu system here, this is your uh, DRM uh, results here, the information as you can see here. And we'll just move uh, straight on to the next part and also you can see here this is a little feature that was built into the actual TV box which is easy clean and cleaning up your cache and stuff like that which I should, I should imagine was because it's only a one gig box maybe that's why they installed this but pretty much you can come down here and turn these features on or off you can see apps running you can turn them off by just turning these little uh, switches on and off and also you can clear your memory and also your cache and also app manage this allows you to uninstall your apps from this location which I thought was a nice little uh, uh, plugin they've used here but you can come straight in here and uninstall stuff that you don't want uh, like this uh, game here you can uninstall that but just click on install and it will remove that from your TV box and it's pretty quick and painless as well as you can see here just click on this and it should uninstall that straight away so keep an eye on how much memory you're using, how much storage you've got. Uh, this does take a, a, a memory card as well. So let's move on uh, to the next bit, which is the system info for Kodi, as you can see here. When you go into system and system info, this will give you all the information about it and how it runs. So you can see the CPU usage and memory uh, used and how much free memory you have when you have Kodi open. So this was one key area where it failed. As you can see, games here are shuttery and stuttery. It, uh, even Angry Birds, it was locking up, as you can see here. It couldn't do anything. And maybe that's because it's only the one gigabyte version, which is like the entry level. Uh, but they do a two gigabyte version, which is about £40. And the one gigabyte version is £32. So you might as well go for the... Uh, the two gigabyte version but again there was a couple of other issues i suppose which was the heat of the actual device it got very very hot uh, which may be causing a lot of uh, slowness and sluggishness because it's getting very hot uh, and the menu system if you're using using an actual uh, remote control it does take an age to get to the apps that you want to use so if you are going to use this i would advise you to get a keyboard and a touchpad Okay, anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoyed these videos, guys, then hit the like button. Also, hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date when we upload new videos. Also, if you've got any problems with your computers, head over to the forums. So thanks again for watching, guys. Bye for now.